Now, this is the fun part. Let's grab our microscopes and take a closer look at our friendly wastewater microorganisms. So we're going to look underneath the microscope at different microorganisms that would be found in wastewater. There's the poster here and then there's a poster in the back of the room and we also have little cards that you guys are going to walk around to the microscopes and you're going to look underneath the microscopes. You will see different organisms underneath the microscopes. What I want you to do is to observe the microscopes and then try to come to the posters and identify the different organisms that you see underneath the scope. These all have different jobs in wastewater, okay? We want to see a large biodiversity because that means that the microorganisms are doing their job. If we see old bacteria, then we might know that our, our product, our clean water, isn't getting cleaned well enough because maybe all the young bacteria aren't in there doing the work. So we want to see lots of micro uh, biodiversity of our microorganisms in our wastewater. What do we mean by old and young bacteria? Different microorganisms will show up in the wastewater process as the population matures. So when we say old bacteria, we're talking about all the microorganisms that show up in the activated sludge population past its prime. These microorganisms may not clean the water as much as they are indicators to us how our process is running. At the opposite end of the spectrum are the young microorganisms like our bacteria and our amoeba. These microorganisms show up first and are generally seen in very large numbers, but they don't do as much for cleaning our water. Of course, as in any food chain, they are critical to the survival of the mature and middle class microorganisms who may use them as food. Now, this middle class, these are our workhorses. If we see a lot of protozoa and ciliates, we are very happy. They remove a lot of the waste and help produce the highest quality water that leaves the plant as final affluent. For the most efficient use of the microorganisms in the wastewater process, there should be significant biodiversity of microorganisms. Imagine a world without trees, a world without insects, a world without flowers, without fish, mammals, or mushrooms. Imagine a world with almost no biodiversity. Biodiversity refers to the variety of life on Earth or in a specific ecosystem. Ecosystems with high biodiversity have many different plants and animals and can better overcome disease, whether related to disasters and human impacts than ecosystems with low biodiversity. Humans are constantly impacting biodiversity when we litter, over-fertilize our lawns, introduce non-native species, and cut down trees, we have a direct impact on biodiversity. Pollution harms species and can even result in species death. Non-native species, like the goldfish, can push out native fish. And the destruction of habitat means plants and animals can no longer thrive, throwing the entire ecosystem out of balance. But you can have a positive impact on biodiversity too. By not littering and participating in trash cleanups, you can keep natural spaces clean and safe for native species. Planting native trees and other plants provides habitat, and invasive plant cleanups can keep species from taking over. Thanks for doing what you can to help keep our world biodiverse.